Good morning, church. Um, I wanted to uh, make an announcement before we started service today. Uh, yesterday morning, um, Paul Axley, the husband of Lori uh, Axley, the Reverend Lori Axley, and the brother of um, our, our friend, the Reverend Chris Axley, and the uncle of our organist, Lauren Axley, passed away in New Hampshire uh, yesterday. This is a tough time. Wednesday. I'm sorry, Wednesday. This is a tough time. A tough time in the church. And uh, so what we want to do is um, we want to do a prayer for the Axley family and for Paul. Let us pray. O oh God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of your servant Paul, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy, and the fellowship of your saints, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please keep the Axley family in your prayers. Thank you.
begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer and page 2 in your bulletin. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through 10 and 33 through 36. We'll read it in unison together. 
together. Let God arise and let his, let his enemies be scattered. Let the those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away, as the wax melts at the fire. And so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them, let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is the same, rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into the freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook, and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent the gracious rain, O God, on your, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provisions for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens, and he sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's sing together the sequence hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you have given me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today, on the seventh Sunday of Easter, we're celebrating between the Feast of Ascension and Pentecost. So I think it's appropriate that we take the, uh, the scripture that we read first in Acts as the, uh, the scripture for our sermon today. And this scripture, this is Luke's version of the Ascension. And in this scripture, I find it fascinating, almost disheartening, sometimes though thinking maybe it shows how human we are. That the disciples, before Jesus was raised, looks at Jesus after all they have seen and all that's gone through and said, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Luke, if I was Jesus, I would have went and slapped every one of them. Now these are the same people that have followed Jesus all the way into Jerusalem through the, uh, the you know, the Holy Week, the arrest, the, the, the flogging, the horrible crucifixion. Peter's in the garden when he's arrested. He hacks off somebody's ear. Jesus puts the ear back on and says, Hey, this is not the way my kingdom is. This is not what I came to do. I didn't come to change the policy or the powers that are in government. I came to change hearts. And after all this, and after Jesus has been resurrected, he shows himself to all these people in the, in, in the upper room and all these places that they've been walking with him. They have the audacity to ask him, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? Now, this reminds me of everybody who says to me, Father Mike, are we getting back to normal? Yes. No, I don't want to slap you. But I want to say, but I do want to say, duh, what is normal? What is normal? You see, in today's gospel, Jesus tells them to go back and to tarry for something that was coming. We're going to talk about that next week in the, when we talk about Pentecost Sunday. But he told them to go and wait for a power, a power that they didn't know about, but a power that would change their lives, transform them, and resurrect them into different people. And what did they do? They went back into an upper room and shut the door. You'll see this in a couple more uh, scriptures. Because they're afraid until that power hits them. And when that power hits them, they begun, they begin to be witnesses to Jesus in all parts of the world. You see, the power of the Holy Spirit is a transformative, regenerative power. But the other part that this got this part of the scripture lesson is today, is that the kingdom of God is not what we think it is. 
By the way, church, I am tired of people telling me I can't wait for God to turn the United States back into a Christian nation. I got news for you. We weren't very Christian ever. We just never were. You might have thought they were, but they were people that were going to church more than 50 that were still cheating on their wives. Amen. <laughs> there were people that were going to church that were still cheating people in business. And just because they went to church didn't make them any more righteous. Today, I'm seeing the church bloom. This pandemic has allowed the church to be the church. The church of Jesus Christ is a church that feeds the hungry. It's a church that clothes the naked. It's a church that looks for people that are in need and goes and helps them out. It's not, it is not, hear me, a church is not a gathering body that worships God. We worship God to get our batteries charged. I have said more than once that this congregation, we come to worship, is just that so we can get our tires kicked, so that we can get our oil changed, so we can go out into the world and get dirty again. Father Mike, are we going to get back to normal? No. I don't know what normal is. By the way, I don't know about you, Lou, but I don't think it's ever been normal. <laughs> History has not been that way. For 2,000 years, we have been trying to be faithful people of God who have tried to love God and love our neighbor in every generation and in every way that that happens. And by the way, the Christians that were right here in 1838 worshipped God and did things different than we do today. They had different things to worry about. In fact, Mr. Mentor here was the rector here during the Civil War. He knows what it's like to go across and bury people who died during that conflict. He knew what it was like when people in his, his parish had people that were fighting for the Union who died. That was his reality. It's not ours. Ours is 2020 with the pandemic. And is it going to go back to normal? No, I doubt it. It'll be a new normal. But I do know this, that Jesus Christ is calling us to go do what the disciples did, to go lock ourselves in prayer and wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. Wait for that empowering power of the Holy Spirit that transforms lives. Church of God, the kingdom of God is not a social political kingdom. It is not one where Donald Trump is president, and it's not one where Joe Biden is president. Can I get an amen? Amen. It's just not. The kingdom of God is a kingdom that with people's hearts are transformed with the love of Jesus Christ. My heart is this big. I cannot believe how many people we're feeding over here at this outreach house. I was on a Zoom call, when was that, Wednesday, Sonia? I think it was Wednesday, with, with uh, the Collegeville Rotary who wanted to know what we're doing so they can help us. I got a call yesterday from the Vets in Recovery who meet here. They haven't been able to meet. But Bill Pinkerton said, we're moved meeting on Zoom, Father Mike, and we love St. James. How can we help? And they're running a food drive this weekend. Why? Because they know that they need, we need to feed the hungry and clothe the naked. The church is strong. The church is a lot stronger than these four walls. The church is a lot stronger than our liturgies. The church is a lot stronger than the beauty of our building. The church is strong when we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to do the work that God has given us to do. I don't know what normal is, church. And I don't care. I want to bring forth the kingdom of God. I want my heart and my soul to be a vessel of the Holy Spirit. I want to be endued with power from on high so that I can change the world one heart at a time. I have said many times that there's going to be revival in this world and it started in Collegeville. And it's going to start in my heart. It's going to start in your heart and your heart and your heart and yours. Take this time. Take this time when we're quarantined to get back into the Bible. Take this time to get on your knees and ask God what it is that he's wanting you to do. 
I am finding people. Everybody, when I go out and walk and I see people through the church and they're telling me, Father Mike, I'm praying more than I ever have. Thank you, Jesus. I celebrated Compliment with my brother Lou on Facebook or, or YouTube channel, I'm sorry, YouTube channel last night. And I was blessed. And I thought to myself, oh man, I'm, this is something I would not have had if this had not happened. I don't know what it's going to look like a year from now. But I do know one thing. St. James will be the church. We will be the church of God. We will be the hands and feet. We will love our neighbors as ourselves. And we will do the things that Christ has called us to do. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of the work that we're doing. We're making a difference out here in this world. We're making a difference. When is the kingdom of Israel coming? I have no idea. What is the kingdom of God coming right now in our hearts? May the Holy Spirit just empower us. Make us see with the eyes of God that there are people that are being taken care of. Every day, Sonia and I, we, we sit there and we watch the, the Today Show and we see some of the struggles that people are going through. But we also see some of the joy, the joy of humanity. We've seen the struggles of, of people who have been touched by COVID-19, but we've also seen people learning how to be in community, learning to feed the hungry, learning to clothe the naked. Church, I have hope. I have lots of hope. We will continue to do what God has called us to do. Take heart. Jesus sent the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. Wait patiently for it. And ask God to empower you for the ministry that you have. In this ministry, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, we will change the world. Amen. 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 Let us stand and recite the words of the Nicene Creed, found on page 6 in your bulletin, or page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The fourth of the prayers of the people was found on the Book of Common Prayer, page 359, or page 7 in your bulletin. You may stand or kneel. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. 
that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. The light of perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those on the St. James prayer list, for those having birthdays this week, for, for those who the, the quarantine has caused economic hardship, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to open the hearts and minds of the community to help those people. And we give thanks, Lord, for all the donations that are coming in to the Outreach House and for the vets in recovery who are running a food drive this weekend, today, to, uh, to help feed the hungry. Please add your own prayers at home. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people. What they have asked faithfully, grant that they may obtain effectually to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Give everyone in your family a kiss and peace, 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 and peace to all of you. Well, let's see. Um, announcements. Um, please, uh, like I said, keep the Axley family in your prayer. Uh, Vets in Recovery are running a food drive today. If you bring a bag of food in, you get a flag. Uh, there, you'll see the signs up uh, this today from 1 to 2. Sunday 1 to 2 is the, uh, is the, uh, the food drive. Many thanks to all those who've come out and helped at the Outreach House while Carol has been away. Uh, the operations have still been going and going smoothly. And thank you for all the volunteers um, that have been doing that. Lou, do you have anything else? We're good. Ron, do you have anything? No. Sonia? No? Please know how much we love and miss all of you. And uh, there's going to be a different change today. Uh, instead of a post-communion prayer, we're going to do a prayer for uh, spiritual communion. So be looking for that and also look for it there uh, in your bulletins. Walk in love as Christ loved us, who gave himself to us as an offering and a sacrifice to God. I forgot one thing. I have birthdays and anniversaries. Sorry about that. I promised Iva Farrell that I would sing to her today. This is Iva's birthday this week. And it's little Colton. I can't remember Colton's uh, last name, but I baptized him. Joanne Simpley's uh, uh, grandson. And oh, your daughter, I can't think because she's been so ill. God knows I love her. I'm sorry. But we're going we're gonna to say a prayer, birthday prayers for Iva and for Colton. And we're going to sing Happy Birthday, mostly because I promised I that I would. So let's stand, all those that are here. If you're at home, please turn in your prayer books to page, oh man, what is it? What, what, what number there? 830. 830, thank you. See, that's why I have a good deacon, 830. Prayer number 50 as we pray for Ivan and Colton on their birthdays. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor and prayer on your servants, Iva and Colton, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow with wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This week, on the, uh, when you're watching the service on the chat, if it's your birthday, please send me a chat so I'll know to do it uh, for you next week. Everybody ready? Yep. I've been called. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I want to do this again. Walk in love as Christ loved us, who gave himself to us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
to pray. It's found on page 8 in your bulletin. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. 
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
If a person desires to receive the sacrament, but by reason of extreme sickness or physical disability, is unable to eat and drink the bread and wine, to celebrate is to assure that person that all the benefits of communion are received, even though the sacrament is not received with the mouth. During this time of isolation, due to the quarantine, we are unable to gather. The restriction causes a physical disability, causing us to be separated. Despite our separation, we are assured of the benefits of God's grace given to us in the Eucharist. Please at home, pray this prayer with me. My Jesus, I know that you are present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you with my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Now may the Holy Spirit of God, who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, equip you with all good things, in order for you to do His most perfect will. May you love graciously, forgive unconditionally, and practice radical hospitality. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>
Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless. We love you all. We'll see you.